Today we're going to start with learning how to evaluate the simple digit rate of t squared minus 4 a plus b. So here's how we do it. When you evaluate a simple fraction like this, one thing that really helps is if you put the parentheses and the subtraction sign in first. That's kind of like a skeleton. Evaluate e squared minus 4a t when a is the 2 and b is the 3 and t is the 5. But we're going to start there. We're going to leave here where b is off the wall. 2 enter a, 5 enter b. Now we evaluate like this. 3 squared is just 9. Let's see, what's 2 times 5? That's 10 times 4. Just remember a few things. One way we can solve quadratics is by graphing. If you graph this equation, what would the solutions be? Well, you can see that each box is worth 2, so this would be a solution right here, negative a, which one is this? Positive 2. What about this one? What's wrong with it? Yeah, it crosses right in the middle. That means it's probably a fraction. So we can say that Solving by graphing, works well when the solutions are integers, but not so well when the solutions are fractions. So, we talked about how you can solve by factoring. So, strategy number two. If you have a, a graph that looks like this, and this is the equation, Could we do this? We could solve by factoring. We notice that we have a difference of two squares, and when you factor a difference of two squares, you end up with you take the square root of this guy, and then the square root of this guy is three. So we say two x plus three, two x minus three. Then we set that equal to zero, which prints a zero in your y. That means that either two x plus three equals zero, or two x minus three equals zero. Solving for x, we look for that three from both sides, and we say two x is the answer to three. Divide by two on each side, and we get the negative three halves of x. Same thing on this side. Our two solutions. So this works really well with fractions and solving by factoring. But you know how mathematicians are. They say it works well with integers, it works well with fractions. What else is on the number line? Well, what if the if the roots are irrational numbers? That would be really hard because we can't factor if the roots are irrational numbers. Can you see an example of that? Let's just erase this. Okay. What if it was something like um, this? So this is our put that into an x, we end up with negative 12x squared and 6x. Can you see this example? That if you multiply, they give you negative 12, and if they add, they give 6. Okay. So we can say, or the, another way to think of it is solve. It's by inverse operation. Okay. We know how to do this already. That's an inverse operation. 
you know how what type of person is this actor and what is it that they're trying to do? Is it an event? Is it a time on the set? How long is that going to be? How much is it that you know you're going to have to do that time for? Is it worth it? The opposite of multiplication is division. Division is multiplication. The inverse of division is going to be four. What is the inverse of squaring? The inverse of squaring is. Let's see how that works. All right, so this is our equation x squared equals 49. Now, if we do the inverse, the square root on this side and the square root on this side. couple examples. The square root here, well, that would have been x equals five or x equals one. And let's see what we have here. If x equals the square root of both sides, I have a equals plus or minus root sixteen. Can I simplify that? Try this one. The square root of both sides. I have b equals the square root of 32 or negative the square root of 32. Can we simplify this one? We can. The square root of 32 is the same as negative. Simplify the square root of 16. We can check it. Let's see. 60 is 6 times 10. So 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3. And 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. So if we take each of the 2's out, we end up with plus. have something that looks more like this. So let's try again. Take the square root of this and rewrite it this way. Oops. We end up with a plus 2 equals plus root 16 or a plus 2 equals negative root 16. Alright, what is root 16? from both sides, a equals 2, or at, um, subtract 2 from both sides, a equals negative 2. Okay. Let's try one more here. Take the square root of both sides. by a, x equals 17. Let's see how this one is. Add 3 to both sides, 3x equals negative 10. Divide by a, 
both sides. Press X and then shift to do a loop through the pink. Or X minus the pink and then press W and loop through. Can you simplify these for me? So let's add 6 to both sides. X equals 6 plus root 13. Those are not like both sides. Minus 1 is a root 55 or n minus 1 is negative root 55. Add 1 to both sides. n equals 1 plus root 55 or n equals 1 minus root 55. Are you seeing a pattern here? Plus root 13, 6 minus root 13. See the pattern? Let's try another one. The square root of both sides. Remember, it says x plus u equals root 12. Or x plus u equals negative root 12. Or let's switch back to a single side. how we can simplify root 12 and put it on the bottom side. That's the same thing as pulling x squared, the square root out, and then u root out. Okay? And then we put u root 13. That's the same side. Well, it shouldn't be like this. It's x equals negative root plus u root 13. Or x equals negative root minus One last problem. Take the square root of both sides. Two x minus three equals the root of the root. Or two x minus four equals negative root forty-one. Okay, let's add three to both sides. Again, it says two x equals three plus root forty-one. Divide by two. root 41 for me. And that puts me in the same as 4 times 12. And 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. So we can take the square root of 4 times 4 out. Or root 3. So it should be like this. If x equals 3 plus 4 root 2 goes into 3. So you cannot reduce that anymore. 